Sean right, Broad. hello again. Um, it's David Powell here again from EDP and Norwich Evening News. Um, I'm joined by Kevin Keenan, Ken Brown, Dave Stringer, Terry Alcock and Bill Punton. Um, I've just been teaching them all about iPads and apps and uh, <laughs> yeah, it's fair to say some of the banter is, uh, still exists. But I'm just going to uh, get a few more views from these guys before I let them go back to their uh, wives and their drinks and their, their lovely lunch. Um, we're going to talk a bit about the World Cup and uh, Bill, Bill Punton, I'm going to start with you. Um, hopefully you've been watching the World Cup, otherwise this question won't work. But um, it's been a fantastic World Cup, hasn't it? Yes, it has. I thought it was fantastic. Every game's been really good, but uh, what's really surprised me is the small teams who've done yeah. so well, like Costa Rica, Algeria lost. Yeah, yeah, Tremendous, mm -hmm. you know. And when you compare them with the, with the position that we were in, where the England team were really, really poor from an attacking point of view. I was very, very disappointed with them, you know. It is, isn't it? It's a joke. What's the joke? I think Scott could probably do that. Yeah, Yeah, the accent does give it away a bit. I, I promise, it's a good job I didn't do the next question. <laughs> Ken, now, Ken Brown, you, you, you're English? <laughs> I'm, pretty, I'm, pretty, I'm pretty sure you're English. Um, so we'll just quickly talk about England. Were you surprised at, um, I was saying the early exit, how rubbish England were? I was very disappointed, I must admit. Um, I thought they would have done a lot better than what they actually did. Um, I, I've, I've got some feeling for it because I did do work for England and, and was out abroad spying on players and what have you for the club. It, it's difficult, it is difficult, I know that, but it, it's getting in the back of the players' minds and, you know, it's not going to be easy. It never is now. Nowadays, it, football now has got more difficult to play than ever it was before, in our language, if you know what I mean. Um, Foreign teams now are, are, are getting far superior to us. Um, I can't quite know why, um, but whatever it is, they're doing the right things, and I don't think we're doing particularly the correct things. Um, from a backward point of view, I suppose, I don't like the inclusion of so many foreigners in England playing football for our big teams. <laughs> I am old-fashioned, I know, but uh, yeah. I don't think that helps our football. No, I want to, to come on to that, and Dave, I'll, I'll talk to you on this one, and, and you've got it absolutely spot on there, Ken Brown. Um, Brown what, why, why, as an international team, are we lagging behind so many, so many other countries? I think the uh, everyone expects, when you talk about England expects, everyone expects England to do well, and I think the mindset is in this country that um, it goes back, you know, to uh, when we were playing international football originally, where we were top of the world, we were beating everybody and went to countries and, and just wiped them out. But since that time, these uh, d different countries have developed their game so well that they have overshone us. They've, they've gone ahead of us in their development of players. I don't think it helps, like uh, Ken has said, that... that uh, a lot of our younger players don't get into the senior teams in the Premiership as often and as many as we would like. Because if you look at the other countries, they haven't got a league like the Premier League where, although they have foreign players in their country, um, they have a, we say the African countries, if you like, they are more of a developing country and they play with a lot more freedom and a lot of more expression than we do. We seem to be too strict in what we want of our players and they become restricted by the fact that they've been given too many uh, things to do on the pitch rather than just play the game, to play it as they see it. And I think if you look at, as an example, Algeria last night playing, I mean, they were terrific. And they were one of the minor countries, uh, you know, over the years, and now they've come to the fore. So it's Costa Rica, people like that, who we wouldn't have thought would win top size. But they've got brilliant players that are playing, plenty of individual ability, individual skill, but you know, allied to the team organisation, they have uh, you know shown the world what they are about. And I think the the finals themselves have been very good for the fact of attacking football. Teams have taken the game by the, the throat and said we're going to go out and try and win these games, rather than say play a tactical game where they're going to sit, 
play the ball until it, you know the other side gets tired and, and try and capitalise on that. They've just gone for it. Teams have gone for it. And the teams who have gone for it have been the most successful. And perhaps we can learn from that. You know, Brazil has always been known as a country that uh, produced individuals that wanted to go and play the game as the game should be played. And that is, you know, how they can express themselves and show what they can do as individuals. And I think that is the big thing that we've lost in this uh, country. Because if you remember, they used to say at one time you could shout down a mine and the football, ten footballers would come up. And and I think in that time. Players and Terry would know more than I would and Bill of the era that these players were around. They were just natural, natural players. And we're not producing them. We're trying to really carbon copy them and bring them up in a way that they've been coached and maybe these things have coached out of them. Okay, well, that's, that's really interesting. I guess a lot of people will hope that continued failure does, does eventually lead, lead to a wake-up call. Terry, um, what, what would you do, so what would be the main thing that you'd do to, to, put, to put it right? Well, I think if you go back to our era, the England team was selected for each individual position being the best player in the country. Now it's built on systems and tactics, um, along with what David was just mentioning about. But you've got to accept that when you go to a World Cup, it's a knockout competition which is the same as the FA Cup, the League Cup. It's no use sitting back and playing tactically to try and get a draw. Mm. You've got to be aggressive, you've got to be willing to sort of move forward and let the younger players have the freedom to play that way. Unfortunately, I think our quality of play is more or less assessed by the salaries they receive. And the salaries that they're receiving, comparison to these minor countries, is immense. Mm. And if they play for 12 months, they're millionaires. And to be a millionaire and still have the motivation that players like ourselves were, is a completely different attitude altogether. Mm. And I think that is a basic problem. Um, why we played throughout the qualifiers with a certain system, and then in the last two months decided to play a completely different system because they'd seen one or two young players exciting the public with their abilities that they got brainwashed really into yeah. playing in that method. Yeah. I think we could have got through the preliminaries if we'd have played in a sound tactical sense which we were used to. But no, we went ungung at it and Unfortunately, it, it, uh, it didn't work out. But when you look at these lesser countries, they play without any fear whatsoever. And they've got superb skills. I mean, Nigeria last night, I thought, was unfortunate to, to miss out. Um, and uh, the previous games, are exactly the same. Yeah. OK. Um, Kevin, obviously, um, the USA, who, who play tonight as we're recording it, so they'll either be out by the time this gets played, or uh, in the quarterfinals. How big a deal is the, is the World Cup in, in America? Oh, it's huge. It's huge. I think since Klinsman's taken over, the, the interest of soccer has just grown and grown and grown. And um, they've certainly done a good job. They really have. Uh, to get to the position where they are now is... Um, I've got to be very honest with you, I really, really don't fancy them against Belgium. But um, the plot thickens, and... Um, They've, they've done exceptionally well, and then nobody can sort of hold anything against them. I was at a, uh, in a bar going back a couple of weeks, and they were playing, and I can tell you, there was 18.2 million that watched the game, which has never, ever been done here in, the, in sports in the United States of America. So you can see soccer is growing in leaps and bounds there, and so is the team. And um, I'll be watching tonight. Um, I sincerely hope that they can pull something off, um, but we'll see. Okay, thank you. We'll, we'll fingers crossed. Um, just going to wrap it up now. I just want to ask one final question before then, Kevin, I'm going to end with you. Um, obviously, you guys have, have played in, in a completely different era to, to the modern game being played now. Um, Dave, I'll, I'll ask you, how, 
how different do you think the, the modern game is? And uh, do you think as a professional you'd have been the same standard? Would you have been able to make it as a professional these days? Well, the differences are that um, if you look at the conditions in which we played in compared to today, where you've got the velvet pitches that are looked after, a mixture of plastic and grass, you've got the ball that is made of a different uh, material, you have the players that are tested individually you know, for their fitness. If we lived in this era, we wanted to play the game, we would have been treated in the same manner, mm -hmm. so we would have had to grow with the, the game as it is. And I mean, everybody throughout time has uh, asked the same question to whether the, the, year, you know, the era in which you played in, would you be okay to play now? I think you probably would because you just follow the regime that is mm -hmm. given now. We had to have more um, resilience when we played because you had pitches that were knee deep in mud and you had to, it was more physical in those days as well. So you could reverse that question and say, would the players today have been able to play in the conditions that we played in? And I think they would find it very, very difficult to revert from today to what they are, we had to deal with. But going the other way, that is the progression. I think we would have probably been able to uh, you know, uh, play our game today as we did then, but we'd have had to be a little bit more athletic perhaps <laughs> than we were. And you'd probably be a whole lot richer um, as well. well. But the money is not everything, there's is the it? Question. Never mind. Got the um, so. Sorry, sorry, Bill. Everybody got the same in those days. When I played for Newcastle, we were on twelve pounds in the playing season, ten pound in the summer, and two pound win bonus. Came to Norwich, was on thirty pound a week, four pound win bonus. But all the players got the same. Mm. Whether you've made goals or scored goals, you still got the same. Now it's completely different, you know. And I guess in that you're going to have a, a potentially a better team atmosphere, less yeah. factions and, exactly, and less yeah. problems with your star players. E excellent. Well, I think I've got a final question for, for Kevin because it be, feels only right that he should get the final word. Um, this is the million and one dollar question. Um, your, your good self, John Ruddy, Robert Green, Chris Woods and Brian Gunn. Who would go in goal and who would be on the bench out of those guys? <laughs> <laughs> Why are you asking him? <laughs> um, my selection, um, I would go Ruddy. Uh, he's got a hide, he's brave, he's got a lot of agility. Um, I think he's very solid at the back. He organises well. He'd be my choice. And on the bench? Myself. <laughs> <laughs> And the rest of us. <laughs> I think he's been very cautious, actually. There's no doubt Kevin would have been. Fantastic. That seems like a, a nice note to end it. There was no face for Michael Fiocletos in, in that list as well, so I apologise to him. Um, gentlemen, it's been an absolute... Could I, could I just say? Of course. Back Ken Brown, finally. What, what I honestly think is, has happened from, from my day of playing, slowly but surely, individualism, players are missing from football now. Yeah. In my day you had wingers that would take full backs on and get balls across and bang it would be in a goal. Majority of goals used to come from width. Mm -hmm. Nowadays, if a player touches it three times, that's a lot yeah. in one movement. But in my day at times you would have wingers going past people trying to get yeah. by, getting to the byline, pulling the ball back, somebody coming on the end of it, getting yeah. crosses into the ball. But Today I find that if, if a player touches it, I say, more than three times, have a look tonight. Mm. Just have a look mm. tonight and see what anybody does. Mm. It's all control, pass and run. That is all the game's going to mm. have. Control, but pass and run. Well, I, think, Ken, I think that uh, you know, some of the teams that have done well in the World Cup have had players who can do what you yeah. just yeah. said. Yeah. And they're the ones that have been successful. Mm. Mm. Not yeah. the ones who keep on playing yeah. like yeah. a game of uh, solitaire. You know, you keep yeah. knocking yeah. the ball right. about. I think last, last our, 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 very our, our generation, yeah. everybody had the ability to take some money. That's right. And that skill has gone out of the game in the last. Dave, Dave Stringer saying that he did. Well, work. <laughs> <laughs> that's why? Because he couldn't stop them. <laughs> Defenders were odd carriers. Hey, I'm a, I'm a centre back on my Sunday league, so I'm in the defenders union on this one. <laughs> no, but you know. You got the corner. <laughs> I do got the corner. Kevin and I are probably are the eldest statesman in this group here, and in actual fact, when we played, 
we played with people like Len Shackleton, Stanley Matthews, Tom Freeman. Um, you could go on all day. But those are the players that excite the crowd. Mm. People right. who will create something, go past people, and create an opportunity to do it. I scored goals because people like him went past the Bill Punton, he's pointing out, not Dave Stringer. <laughs> <laughs> people like Bill would go past, as Ken remarked, go past the fullback at every opportunity if he didn't get clobbered. And, and then, all I was doing was getting into the penalty area and making sure I got across a defender. We don't see that very often. No. If, you watch, if you watch Norwich week in, week out, the only time we get more than one person in the penalty area is from a corner or a free kick. And I've not, this season, seen a midfield player go beyond the free no. no. And if, if you don't do that, you're not going to score goals. No. Right. And uh, I hope that Neil will encourage us yeah, yeah, yeah. and get midfield players to go beyond them. And if you're an intelligent player and you're a front man and a, a midfielder goes past you, you just slot into the position. Yeah, you don't right. have to sort of make an issue of it. Mm. You just walk there. You know, sure. it's, it's, na it's, it's natural playing. And there's not enough natural players no. have got a team attitude. Yeah. Okay. Okay, well, I really, really could sit here all afternoon and uh, listen to you guys talk about football. Um, <laughs> I'm sure you could. Um, it has been an absolute pleasure. Um, thank you for giving up a bit of time uh, to talk to us uh, today. And uh, I just want to know where you are at the start of September, because my Sunday league team could do with a few people <laughs> around, around this table in, in our dressing room. So if you're free at the start we of September... We were talking about winning something, <laughs> <laughs> we can't walk across the pitch now. <laughs> Thank you very much, gentlemen.